In this video, we're gonna take a look at a purple ink by Mont Blanc Lavender. Now, as always, there's timestamps down below so you can skip around, but if you've got the time, it really would help me out if you check out the entire video. Also, down in the description are links to playlists, so if you'd like to see other purple inks, you can check that out there. Now, let's get into the first writing sample done on 90 GSM Clairefontaine. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, it does shade some. Where? It's going from dark to super dark, like quick, super dark to dark to super dark. Brown, super dark to dark, seven seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, and some decent shading, like fox goes lighter to darker, jumps goes lighter to darker, lazy goes lighter to darker, 10 seconds to dry. Now the extra fine shows no color variation. It was harder to spot there. The medium shows a little more and it's a little more noticeable. The smear test, you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. To have a range of experience with this ink, all of the writing samples are done with a Jinhao 159 with a 1.1 stub, a Jinhao X450 with a medium, and a Jinhao X750 with an extra fine. Then a Sailor 1911 ringless with a fine nib was inked up, used for a day, and used to take the notes for this video. The next writing sample is done on 52 GSM Tomoe River. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread halo sheen, no shade, and 10 seconds to dry. The medium is a little bit darker than the extra fine and a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread halo sheen, no shade, 16 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it. We didn't get it. But what we do get is to recover it if you smear while you're writing. I agree with Vita. There's a lot to learn by doing multiple chromatographies. The one on the left is done the way it's supposed to be done. A line of ink is put down and then it's put in the water for 10 to 15 seconds. And we see this very light kind of grayish tone at the bottom. It's forming a line and pushing its way up. And we get this nice dark, dark purple all the way at the top. The one on the right is let dry for 10 minutes before it's put into water, and that grayish line at the bottom is a little darker, a little bit more there. Shows that there might be a little bit of resistance here, but I would be surprised from that on a Mont Blanc ink, because normally if they're gonna be resistant, they're gonna tell you. But the rest of that purple pushes its way up. We'll see how that resistance goes. The next writing sample is done on 80 GSM Rhodia dot pad. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, spots of shading like the K in quick is a little bit darker. The B in brown is a little bit darker. The X in fox, eight seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the extra fine with no feather spread, halo sheen, small spots of shading, like the W in brown is just a little bit lighter, the X in fox is a little bit darker, 12 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both don't really show a lot of color variation, and honestly, there's not tons in the writing. Resistance tests are done to see how this ink can be expected to perform on the page, and more importantly, how hard it may be to clean from your pen. The smear is allowed to dry for three days before testing it. Looking at the highlighter, I would not use it. Let's just go look at it. It's horrible. Don't use this in a note-taking situation if you need to go back and highlight. That would be bad. Now, water is starting to lift some of the darkest tones and not lifting all of it, which was a little surprising. Pen flush is working a little bit faster than water did, but it's not even showing the white of the paper come through. Still surprising. One third bleach solution is completely obliterating it off the page. Not surprising. Also not surprising. It only took water to get this out of my pen. The next writing sample is done on Fabriano Echo Qua. No bleeding, no ghosting. 
The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and six seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and eight seconds to dry. The scrubby from Osho is no color variation. We didn't expect it, we didn't get it, and the smear test you could recover if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average viscosity was 2.5, with the realm of normal being from 2.1 to 2.9. Mont Blanc's lavender has a viscosity of 2.18, making it normal. If you're interested in how the viscosity is tested and all of that's done, then down in the description is a link to that video. Now let's take a look at the next writing sample done on Loistrum 1917 paper. No bleeding, no ghosting. The 1.1 has no feather spread, halo sheen, or shade. The extra fine is lighter than the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and five seconds to dry. Medium is the same tone as the stub with no feather spread, halo sheen, no shade, and 12 seconds to dry. The scrubby for both show us no color variation. We didn't expect it, we didn't get it, and the smear test there's a maybe you could recover it if you smeared while you were writing. For the inks tested, the average dry time was 17 seconds, with the realm of normal being from 13 to 21 seconds. Mont Blanc's Lavender Purple has an average dry time of 12 seconds, making it just a bit faster drying than normal. The last writing sample is done on 20 pound copy paper. Now, we don't get any bleeding through that touches the next page, but we get a ton of ghosting. The kind that I think you could not use the back of the page if you needed to, but it doesn't touch the next page. The medium has no feathering. Really good, no spread, no halo, no sheen, no shade. Really good performance right here. The extra fine is a little bit lighter than the medium. It does not have any feathering. It does spread to about a fine. No halo, no sheen, no shade. Great performance. I'm really impressed with this. One second to dry. The scrubby shows no color variation. We're not getting it. And the smear test you could definitely recover if you smeared while you were writing because you can't smear. Instead of finding inks that look like Mont Blanc's lavender, I'd prefer to find an ink that complements its color on the page. I went with a nice orange ink from Monteverdi, their Topaz. Now, if you'd prefer a different complement color, then down in the description are links to different playlists that you can look at there. What do I think of Mont Blanc's lavender? Matt Armstrong sold me on this ink back when he reviewed it. I got a bottle way back then. I'm thankful he did. I bought this, no samples needed. I think a fine nib can be a great test of an ink and this is gorgeous and shades nice from a Japanese fine. Awesome. So what nib and pen will give the best writing experience with this ink? This, like many great inks, looks good from just about any pen, but I don't really care for how it looks from super wet pens. I hope you got something out of this video, and in the next video, we're gonna take a look at a shimmering ink from Diatramentis Whiskey Brown Gold.